Ethereum 2.0 is actually gonna be released soon. So what are your thoughts on it going from um, a proof of work to a proof of stake? Well, I mean, I think in terms of testing out uh, proof of stake at scale, uh, Ethereum is where it's going to happen. Uh, all okay. of the other proof of stake uh, systems so far have, have not been tested at the transaction scale, the um, uh, market capitalization level, the activity level that Ethereum brings to the table. So being able to test proof of stake at that scale is very, very uh, interesting. And um, you know, who, who knows how it's going to go. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how um, Ethereum 2.0 handles that challenge. Um, the roadmap seems rather um, well thought out. So this uh, series of transitions or phases um, moving from proof of work to a second chain to um, various intermediary chain uh, uh, stages until finally you have a pure uh, proof of stake uh, system running on, on this uh, sharding infrastructure. I, I think that's very interesting and it tests two things simultaneously. It tests proof of stake, but it also tests um, sharding as a scaling approach. And so uh, it's a very risky experiment, but I think it's a very interesting experiment and we're gonna learn a lot from it. And of course, uh, as soon as Ethereum 2.0 is deployed on um, uh, in production, I'm, I'm gonna have to write the second edition of Mastering Ethereum to incorporate that information. So uh, I'm, I'm a bit uh, dreading that because it's going to um, open up a whole bunch of work for me, but uh, I'm looking forward to it at the same time. Um, I wanna get your thoughts on um, proof of stake. Um, yeah, so, well, let me speak a bit about decentralization, right? So, I mean, the main reason why you use a blockchain is because of decentralization. If you don't really need decentralization, then the blockchain is just a very kind of expensive mm. database, right? So if you, if you have a coin that's not decentralized and it's using a blockchain, you have to question like why, right? If you, they could easily have just used a centralized database and it would just be more efficient and cheaper and everything would still work because, in, and you rely on that entity anyways. Um, so moving on to, to proof of stake, I'm not fully kind of bought in on proof of stake. Uh, proof of stake has been around for, for many years, right? In the decades, um, has never really worked well um, because there's always um, the issues with um, like nothing at stake problem. There's issue with basically the rich getting richer um, and it's not as fair as proof of work. I think proof of work is still like the best form of uh, consensus algorithm for, for money, for decentralized global money. Um, proof of stake could work, uh, but we just, I haven't seen it work well yeah, yet. But just finally, you mentioned Ethereum and I have to ask you of course about Ethereum because um, you know we've got Ethereum 2.0 coming out soon. So there must be something interesting about the update that excites you. Well, I... I don't actually know when Ethereum 2.0 is going to hit. I don't think they've been fully honest about that rollout. Um, and also, I don't think they fully thought through the consequences of the upgrade that they're doing. Um, we did. It took us years to figure that out. And it's not going to be the case that when we go from Byron to Shelley, that there's going to be Cardano Classic running on Byron and Shelley running at the same time as its own chain. I think there's a very high probability because there's $26 billion worth of mining capacity running on Ethereum that there's going to be an Ethereum Classic Classic. So the original ETH is going to run uh, in tandem with uh, the new Ethereum. Um, so they're, they're still trying to work their mind around all that. And we wish them well. We hope that it's a successful upgrade. But let's be clear, they're firing their miners. The People spent years building up all these dedicated operations and have are mining Ethereum. And then suddenly when F2 comes out, all of them are go out of business. And you know people like Vlad Zamfir and others have been incredibly dismissive. They called the miners mercenaries and useless, and we want to put them out of business. So out of spite, maybe those miners will keep the original Ethereum rolling and that will actually become its own chain. So there's always the risk of that. You know, the other thing is if they honestly believed that F2 is like out tomorrow, why are they even talking about ProgPow? That's what I've never understood. So why would you switch your proof of work mining protocol to a different protocol when you're planning on already throwing away all of your proof of work protocol? It just seems like a pointless debate to have. 
Um, that said, um, F2 is is converging to a design that probably works. However, it's mired in complexity, and I think it's unnecessary for what they want to accomplish. I mean, sharding the ledger is a, probably the most dramatic and difficult thing you can do as a project. It's very expensive. It's very time-consuming. It's uh, It reduces your security from half Byzantine resistance to a quarter to a third, depending on how you do it. And uh, at the end of the day, there's just so much more complexity that you now have to think about uh, with the sharded ledger. And then, you know, availability is always an issue, and you have to think about that. What we chose to do is use a single shard environment and embrace an L2 solution, Hydra, that will allow us to grow to millions of transactions per second without having to shard the base ledger. Mm. So we can use much more classical distributed systems theory and just optimize that, and it should work for four or five years worth of growth in our system, if not more. Um, in fact, at the moment, uh, what's coming with Shelly would be able to run pretty much all the transactions that you would normally encounter with Ethereum and Ripple and Bitcoin combined and still be able to operate on a single shard environment. So I just don't see the net necessity to embrace something this dramatic. It's the classic case of chasing sexy technology for the sake of sexy technology, not realizing that you're in getting yourself a really difficult tail that's going to be hard to work through. Mm -hmm. And, you know, big companies make these mistakes. Um, Intel chased uh, Rambus, you know, uh, and they, they threw in the towel eventually and went to uh, DDR RAM. Um, then, you know, uh, Nissan went with the CVT transmission, and that was an elegant, beautiful piece of technology, but it took generations and generations to get to a point where it was reliable. Uh, so I think they're going to have much more problems with this transition than, uh, than they're letting on. And it's not clear if the benefits are going to be significant. On the other hand, it's going to be the first example of a purely sharded thing uh, that we all get to learn from and see. Yeah. So there's a lot of great academic uh, knowledge that will be gained from this uh, this movement of this model. Um, their accounting model is also going to work against them, by the way. The glo whole global state thing that the EVM has is not amenable to sharding. Whereas extended UTXO, the accounting model that we use for Cardano that we spent years designing, is. Mm -hmm. It's much easier to shard that. So, you know, these are examples of where sometimes your design hinders your ability to innovate and you have to go back to the drawing board. And that's why we chose to use first principles because we kind of knew where we were going from the very beginning. Um, but, you know, all, all cases, EOS, Tezos, Ethereum, all these things, their upgrades are as beneficial to us as they are to them. Uh, and we have the privilege of being able to learn from it, not have to pay for it. So uh, we're, we're actually pretty excited that they're choosing a different model than we're choosing. Mm -hmm. uh, and it'll kind of it'll kind of be the market's decision whether they want to embrace uh, something built on granite with peer review and safety and stability or, you know, kind of an experiment that has a poor track record of having things explode in the user's face like the DAO hack or the parity hack or other things. And the core entities never pay for that. It's the users who end up paying for that. They're, they're the ones who lose hundreds of millions of dollars every time these things Finally, occur. Then, I want to get your thoughts on Ethereum 2.0. I think Ethereum 2.0, um, uh, I think, uh, so uh, again, I think uh, I got to explain this very carefully. Um, even with Ethereum 1.0, I was skeptical. Um, so I was chatting with Vitalik. He, he was crashing over at my place. And I, I knew him from the end of 2013, as soon as we entered the industry. And uh, he was still working for Bitcoin Magazine back then, I think. I just started Ethereum. And um, uh, so 2014, he launched his ICO, um, and the first ICO uh, 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 in history, I think. And uh, uh, I, we were I was talking with him, and then in May 2015, he came, he came over to Tokyo, crashed away at, at my place. And I remember I was telling him that, uh, uh, I was like, dude, like, this is, too, this is too, big, too big of a bite to chew. Um, you're gonna have a turning complete language on a blockchain. That's crazy. Um, that's really hard to do. And um, um, I told him that, and he's like, "No, no, no, we can build it." And I was like, "Okay, good luck." Um, so I didn't. I actually didn't invest in, in Ethereum in the early days. Mm -hmm. So I missed out on that. Um, but to his credit, um, he did deliver. So uh, it's a very ambitious project, uh, and he delivered. Um, Ethereum 2.0 is again a much harder than even 1.0, I think, because the once a product is out, now you have to worry about all the backward compatibility issues, um, everything. Um, so I think it's, uh, but again, um, they have delayed the release of that um, uh, uh, over and over again. But I think that's understandable given uh, such an ambitious project. Mm -hmm. So I'm, 
um, it looks like they're going to finally shoot sometime uh, this quarter or next quarter, hopefully. So uh, uh, I, I do hope to see it very soon. Uh, I think it will be a huge booster uh, to the uh, to the entire crypto uh, industry if they can do that. Um, and I will also be patient if they don't deliver within the next six months. Uh, let's just give them a bit more time. So I'm skeptical on the timing uh, on the on the actual they can deliver in the next six months. Mm -hmm. But I've been wrong before, so I could be wrong again. I do really hope to see it deliver very soon. I think it will be I think it will be fantastic for the overall industry.